Let's have a look at some examples of how we could apply the going concern assumption. So accounting assumption A2, the second one. Let's start the first example. On the 1st of January, a business pays $1,200 for its insurance for the next 12 months. But because the business has little money, the owner isn't sure the business will be 100% will be around next week, let alone in 12 months time. So here's what we should do. We're going to assume the business will exist not only for the next 12 months, but forever. So we've got this $1,200 of insurance for 12 months. So that's going to be $100 a month. $100 expense in January, February, March, and so on for the rest of the year. That makes sense. Okay, when we look at accrual basis assumption, we've now can match our revenues with our expenses. But yeah, that makes sense. We, even though we don't think the business, you know, might not be around after January, here's what we don't do. We don't just say, oh, well, sorry, we think the business isn't going to exist in the future. So we say, oh, that's a $1,200 expense for January. It's not. That expense is going to last for the future. It's actually going to be an asset, uh, which we'll look at in a much later topic, but this is an asset for the future, this insurance. So what we shouldn't do is just assume that the business is going to end in January and lump it all in there. We spread it out to the actual period that it relates to. Example number two. In 2021, a business buys a new delivery truck which costs $50,000. It expects it to last for the next five years before it's scrapped but the owner thinks they will end the business by the end of 2022 and retire. So this is a topic called depreciation, which we're not really gonna look at now, we're just gonna keep this simple. So when we do do depreciation, it's a little more complicated than what we're doing here. But what, here's what we're gonna say. We're gonna say this truck costs 50,000. It's gonna last for five years. We bought it in 2021. So what we should do is we should assume the business will exist for the next five years, and we will use up $10,000 of the truck every year. That's what we should do. So basically what we're saying is we're going to have an asset for the next five years. We're just going to use a bit of it each year. What we shouldn't do is this. The owner thinks they're going to retire by 2022. So we shouldn't say it's a $50,000 truck. I'm going to use it there and there and then it, that's it. That doesn't make sense. It's not like the truck disappears. There's still a truck. We haven't used all of it. Um, but if we did this and assume the business was going to end after 2022, that's what we would be doing. We are going to assume we have this asset for the future, even if we're not the ones that own the business. One more example. In 2021, a business takes out a 20 year mortgage loan. So a mortgage loan is a loan for a property. And the owner has no idea if the business will be around in 20 years or if it is that he'll still be the owner. I mean, that's such a long time frame. So here's what we should do. Uh, we've got a $200,000 loan for 20 years. We will assume that we're going to repay that $10,000 a year every year all the way for the next 20 years okay and because that's so far into the future i mean yeah it, will the business be around in 20 years well it's irrelevant with the going concern assumption we assume it will be and we will assume these ten thousand dollar repayments will be made every year for the next 20 years fundamentally what those examples demonstrate is that the going concern assumption allows us to divide our assets and liabilities into those two categories we've got assets the things we own because we've got a going concern assumption, we can say there's some current assets, the ones we'll own or use within the next 12 months, and some non-current assets, the ones we'll own or use after the next 12 months. Likewise, in those examples, the going concern assumption allows us to say with the liabilities, which are the things the business owes, there's current ones. There's ones that are due within the next 12 months, and there's ones that are due after the next 12 months, even if we're not certain the business will be around. That's the beauty of the going concern assumption, because without it, we'd have to lump everything in the current section for both assets and liabilities, and that's not going to work. That doesn't give us good information. So this way, we have the best information, and we can set our reports out in current and non-current for both assets and liabilities.